everybody and welcome back here at Adobe Live and welcome, welcome to How To. I'm so excited to be here with you and host this brand new show. Super exciting. I can see so many amazing people already in the chat. Thank you so much for being here and tuning in with us here on Adobe Live. So first and foremost, before I start to say hi to everybody, I want to say thank you so much for kicking off the day with us here at Adobe Live. Um, already, if you have just tuned in, I was uh, streaming with the lovely Feel, and we were working on Adobe Creative Cloud Express in order to make standout graphic for your business and learn how to grow the business fast by using this quickly quick and easy technique on Adobe Express, or Adobe Creative Cloud Express, we should say. And uh, as usual, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Claddy, and I'm always super excited to be here uh, with you. And I'm streaming from Manchester, UK. I am an Italian designer, and I really enjoy spending my time here with this wonderful community while we'll sharpen our skills in Illustrator, Photoshop, and we just flex our designer's muscle. So we're here together to uh, work on specific topic and to learn how to, to do something specific with these wonderful apps today and tomorrow. We'll be focusing on how to create a mock-up. We'll be uh, juggling Illustrator and Photoshop. These streams are and welcome everybody from beginners to pros. We're here to learn together. Don't forget to use the chat. And if you're watching from YouTube, head to behance.net slash live or be.net slash live in order to join the conversation. Ask your questions and just hang and chill here with us. It's always a lot of fun. And having said that, let me start to go and say hello in the chat. I can see the lovely Cody Bear with us. Uh, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for any link uh, that will be dropping in chat. They're usually very useful and uh, clickable. Also, I wanted to say hi to Christelle, Biola, George, Steve, ciao, lovely to see you. We have Sandra um, and Sirusa. Let me know in the chat, where are you watching from? Uh, I'm just going to go and scroll back. I can see a little bit everybody saying uh, hello. Maggie, uh, Nadia, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for being here with us. And of course, Angela as well. Beautiful. Right. So keep the conversation going. Come and say hi. Derek is saying, Hoo -hoo, let's get started. I agree. Let's get started. And also, real quick, don't forget to tune in on the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges with Andrew Ocrado talking about sharpening the illustrator skills, that's a great place to do so by participating to the Encore challenges. But let me jump into my screen real quick uh, and see what we're starting to work with today. So the first thing that I'm, I'm just gonna start with a freebie. Let's just, let's just make things cool. Let me see, actually, 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 one more thing. So today, I start from the product. I'm gonna show you how to make a mock-up for products such this one here. So this is a, a, a pillow that I've designed a while ago. And in order to sell it, what I have to do is to first create a mock-up. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to learn how to create a professional mock-up that you can use for your shop, for your portfolio to display your design and your graphics, even something as simple like that, or as cool as the Creative Cloud logo. We're going to make all this fun stuff. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to jump into my screen. And as I said, I love to start with freebies. Talking about uh, uh, mockups, there is a free mockup available for you if you head to iamclady.com slash freebie is an iPhone wallpaper mockup, which is there for you um, to, to work with and if to use at your convenience. We're going to talk about that specific mockup. Let me know in the chat. Uh, if you want to do the phones today, we can do it tomorrow. There is so much. And also, if you have any suggestion, don't forget, we're going to be together tomorrow. So if you have a specific mock-up or a specific need uh, for your own business, for your own portfolio, let me know today in the chat. 
because I really want to take notes and I'm going to be here taking notes to make sure that I learn, I show you and we learn together how to make that mock-up together. But in order to get started today, first things first, let's jump into Illustrator. I always create side project and I cannot stress enough the importance of creating a side project. This is one side project of mine where I was playing with uh, branding and typography and I just wanted to have an idea to launch my own shop for my own drawing and my own design, which I'm probably going to give you a little bit of a preview of cloudy illustration that doesn't happen very often because I'm quite shy with my drawings. but. As I said, I trust this wonderful community uh, and we're always here to learn together. So I will share that secret illustrations with you. I haven't shared them anywhere, so it's definitely a preview. Uh, but here it is, that's the logo that I've created. It's called The Emporium and this is gonna be my shop. Um, again, I used a combination of a simple logo and I created some space here in order to add the word like gift. So in this case, it can be the pillow emporium or the mugs emporium or just a gift shop, whatever you want. It can be the flower emporium, whatever you want. And of course, you can choose any logo or any graphics you like. I also accompanied some graphics there that we're going to use for our mock-up. If you're curious about I create, how to create a logo, we have a, a new set of show of how to coming up. So let me know which are your favorite topics. This is kind of the first time that we are together with a how to uh, and I'm really collecting as much feedback as possible. Uh, we have Rwanda in the house, New Zealand, Biola Sena. I love that you always bring sample. Isn't that cool? Like seeing the real thing. And we're going to see how to make it happen in Photoshop. Steve is saying cool font. Sandra, hi from Austria. Um, okay, call me Cedric. Fantastic, Cedric. And we have Christelle from Fan France, Joella from San Francisco, California, Canada, Ella, Wisconsin. The world is here. So let's do this. <laughs> Beautiful. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I start a project, in particular a mock-up, is to create a folder in our wonderful Creative Cloud libraries. If you haven't worked with Creative Cloud libraries yet, make sure to head under Window, which is the home of your panels. And from here, just simply select Libraries and you will see that the Libraries panel will pop up inside your screen. Here it is. As you can see, I have a ton of libraries. If you don't have any, that's absolutely fine. That's the day to start today. And to start, all you have to do is to click on Create New Library just right here. Let me zoom in into it. And by clicking on creating a library, you will be able to start by naming your library. So I'm going to call this one um, mockup assets. And by doing so, I'll actually mockup the Emporium. So I actually know what I'm working on and what brand is related to. Uh, that uh, Creative Cloud library will allow you to share assets with your teammates, with your clients, but most importantly, will allow you to store and organize and access anything in terms of photo, graphics, color palette. We'll see the power of these wonderful libraries throughout your Creative Cloud. That means that no matter if you're working with Creative Cloud Express or Illustrator, or Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, Premiere Pro, you name it, you can access your assets anywhere, anytime. They're stored there and actually in a very organized way. So I'm going to go ahead and call it the Emporium. So I know that I'm creating mock-up and I'm creating for the Emporium. If you know me, you know I cannot spell. So be patient, please. <laughs> uh, here we are. And then simply click on Create. And then all I'm left to do here is literally to click and select the graphic that I want to use for my mock-up and drag it inside our libraries. Now watch out. If I click and drag multiple assets, they will be a bring, bring brought in as one single graphic element. So I would strongly recommend to click and drag one asset at the time. So what if happens like so that you do have this asset here, which you don't need? Well, all you have to do is to simply select the asset, uh, asset that you have perhaps placed by mistake and then click on the bin icon and just as quick, quick, it will be removed from your library. So I'm going to go ahead now and quickly drag all the rest of the items inside um, all the rest of the artwork inside my library. Of course, if you want to be very organized, which I will recommend you to do so, you can click on the item and also name it. So by clicking on rename it, you can call this one logo 
red and so on and that looks of course i misspelled it i'm sure <laughs> love go the love in the hair is almost feb is almost is almost valentine so we always have the love i always have the love in the hair uh, but yeah, you can go ahead and rename it. That's actually a great chance to see how to rename it over and over again. And you can do that with all your assets. So that that's also um, a great opportunity to show your clients or your art director, depending on who you're working with, how organized you are. And here we go. Here is how we add different versions of the logo. And then let me just go ahead and add the black as well. I think it was just there. You will see that this says artwork number five. At the moment, it just adds it in a numerical way. And you can also add groups. So in this case, if I perhaps want to add the entire graphic here, all I'm left to do is to right click on it. And you will see that also here we have an option that says add to library. So click on add to library and you will see that the entire graphic group is now accessible from your library. And let's bear in mind, once you add assets like that inside your library, those become cloud assets, which can be edited independently. That means that if we edit the asset over here in our original file where we have generated it, so let's say, for example, when I click on this and then click on my fill control in order to change the color to whatever other color, maybe this darker blue, the asset will change in my artboard but it will stay consistent inside my libraries. So what if I want to change the assets in the library? Well, if you are in Illustrator, you can simply double click on it. I believe that you can do that also in Photoshop. We're going to test it together in a second or all simply from any other app, simply select on it and then click on edit. So I'm going to show you that once we uh, are working in Photoshop, because that's the beauty of working from one app to the other. You can actually access the asset. And once we edit it here, though, bear in mind that this asset will automatically be edited and update throughout uh, your uh, workplace. So here you will see that right away is changed the color, uh, the color of change inside the library. And we're going to see in a second in Photoshop that the asset will also be updated if it's still connected to our library. So hopefully so far so good. Uh, let me see if there is any question in chat. Um, let's see. Everybody's saying hello. George. Hi, Clary. I need to send someone my portfolio. How do I send someone my portfolio uh, daily creative challenges, which I've completed so far? Well, the best way to do so, George, is to perhaps create an InDesign document with your portfolio in a shareable links. And, you know, I know that we have to stick on mock-up, but this is how to. And I really want to take advantage of uh, the wonderful Adobe Creative Cloud sub subscription and the fact that we are here together to learn how to. And I'm actually going to show you that real quick. That's the beauty of the live. As I say, that's a safe space to ask questions. I want to try to help as much as possible. Um, while InDesign launches, I'm just going to keep going here. But uh, George, I got you. I got your question and I'm going to show you real quick how to um, how to use that. And actually, we're going to use our libraries and we're going to pretend that these assets here that we have created is a uh, um, part of your daily creative challenge. So if you've done your daily creative challenge in Illustrator, all you have to do is to create a library and simply add your graphics inside your library and then jump into InDesign. And from here, let me just make sure that this is full screen so you can all join. And hopefully these questions, George, are amazing because not only they are helpful for you, but I'm sure there are so many other people out there that want to know how to share their portfolio. So here, all I'm going to do is to make sure that I press Command N or click on New File to open a new file. I'm going to open web. So I'm going to click and set my intent to web and you will see that automatically all my settings are ready for web. You can choose whatever size you want. I usually like uh, to use a 16 by nine, nine, which it will be 1080, uh, sorry, 1920 by 1080, uh, which is the uh, standard. Hi Siri. We don't need you. Thank you. <laughs> so 1920 by 1080 uh, is the resolution that we want. I'm going to call it George portfolio. Uh, so I remember what we were doing here. You can choose the number of pages that you want and just simply click on create. Uh, and I'm going to be very brief here. I know we're going to go back to our mockups, but I think that that's very useful. Um, maybe next time we can do how to create an interactive portfolio. I can show you a little bit further how to create buttons and all that beautiful stuff here in InDesign. Looks like my computer is having a little bit of a think um, and hopefully it's going to open soon. 
in order to show you how to create the portfolio. And the reason why I've jumped into InDesign real quick is because I want to show you how to create that portfolio and most importantly, how to share it. Let's give it a moment. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead. Oh, here we go. Ready. I was going to go ahead and clean my bin. That usually helpful when computer is feeling a little bit stuck. So here, once we jump into the CC libraries, you will see that they will open up uh, usually to the last library that you used. We have the, our mock-up emporium there at the top with our artwork. We have our artwork there that we just created. Simply click and drag and drop it inside your page. Uh, of course, up to you to place it, whatever you want. And you know you can create text and you can embellish your portfolio, making sure that you get your social media, your website and all the good stuff, your email and your phone number in order to get contacted. But here I am. In order to share it, all you have to do is to click on the share icon over here and then select publish online. Also, you have the option to publish it online as a public file or just with the link, you will be able to uh, set the options there. You can give it a title, a description. So there will be, you know, my creative challenges during Adobe Live with Andrea Crado, with Clady, whatever. Uh, and then simply click on publish. By doing so, you'll be able to have a link that you can share with the world and also on your social media that contains all your graphics. Sorry, my computer is sounding angry. I know I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to move the mic away from it. It's just thinking a lot. But as you can see here, we have now a link which is stored inside our um, uh, Adobe server and we can access it. And here it is, your artwork in InDesign, ready to go and ready to be shared with anyone that, that you want. Uh, and again, I'm going to do that real quick because I think that's super cool. We can always click, right click on the assets on the Creative Cloud libraries, select edit from there. Illustrator will open up and because that's fire, isn't it? That's so amazing. Here we can change the color, maybe back to our turquoise. Press Command S to save it. You will see that it updates over there inside our libraries. And if we jump back into Illustrator, boom, is updated. And if you want to update the link, you do not need to create a new one. Simply go back, click on Share, Publish Online. And here, all you have to do is to make sure that you update. I'm going to zoom that in, update existing document. And from there, uh, simply click on Publish and the new document uh, will be published. So don't forget to save first. <laughs> so you can actually, um, after you save, get the right document in and publish online. Make sure that you update the file and here we go. You will see that the now is up to date and you can update the link, publish it. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm going to overwrite the, the file. So if there is having a mistake or you forget something, you don't need to bug people with another email. All you have to do is to update the link. Nobody's going to know. And, um, all you have to do now, let's go ahead. I'm just going to click refresh. Hopefully it's already there with a brand new color uh, available for you. And that's how you showcase your portfolio. Here it is. Literally, I don't know. We took what, 10 minutes and here it is. But now let's go back into our mock-up and let's jump into our libraries for a new feature that I want to show you. So uh, besides adding your graphics inside our libraries, uh, Cedric is saying, can you share with us the link? Of course I can share with you the link. Uh, let me see how to do that here. You're probably going to see me twice. Hopefully let's put that on mute. So at least you hear my voice once. Um, and I can share the link with you on Adobe Live. My computer is really suffering today. I probably need to close some applications here. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's go ahead and watch my show here <laughs> on Adobe Live. And once it loads, I'll be able to uh, put the link in chat. So you will see that that's live. That's happening for real. And for those of you watching from YouTube, come and join us on behance.net slash live. Here is the link. It's just an image. Uh, George, I used your name, George Portfolio. Here we go. Uh, of course, I misspelled Portfolio. But again, you've seen, you've got the drill. You can go ahead and actually um, update that right away inside InDesign. But let's jump back into Illustrator. So today we also touched on InDesign. I know that many people want that. I'm happy. Thank you, George, for your question. Hi, Andreas. Don't worry. We're, we're still taking a tour of Creative Cloud here. Uh, but let's go back and actually let's start with our mock-up. So as I said, another feature that I wanted to show you here from the library is that here we can access our 
beautiful stock libraries. If you're not a photographer, if you don't know where to start in order to have quality images that look professional in order to create your mock-up, Adobe Stock is there to help you by providing professional image stock available for you. Um, you have uh, uh, some uh, stock that you can purchase, but also you have access to stock that is free. So uh, the best way to access your Adobe Stock is to head in your library so we don't even need to leave the app. Make sure that you search inside the Adobe Stock library. And as I said, we're going to start by using the word pillow. And as you can see, right away, we'll see many different pillow available for our mockup. Uh, I already licensed this year. All I'm left to do is to click on the plus icon to save it inside my library. So it's ready to be edited. Is there? It's just loading. So everything is kept together, stored and organized. And I'm almost done here. I just want to make sure that we keep our color palette inside a library. So we have all the elements together, ready for our mockup to happen. Uh, and in order to create the color, the color palette, what I'm going to do here is to click and drag into our main assets that contain our colors, which are the different logos. And then I'm going to head under windows and select the swatches panel. Once we select the swatches panel, it will pop up inside our canvas. Here it is. And then by clicking on the little library here, we will be able to create a brand new color group. Uh, Illustrator is going to ask what do you want to create this color, uh, color group from? And I'm going to make sure that I have our selected artwork there. And I'm going to call this one the Emporium. Here it is. And then select on OK to make sure that our color is there. Now, how do I transfer this color inside the library? Very simple. You have an icon here at the bottom of the swatches panel that will allow you to add the selected, selected swatches and color groups inside your library. So in just one click, look what happens. Boom. Our color theme is there, ready for us to use everywhere and anytime. Um, oh, it looks like my laptop is disconnected, but we're back. I'm glad I caught it. Let me know. I don't know at which point it disconnected. Let me know in the chat uh, if there is anything that I need to repeat. Um, I'm just going to do it real quick. Just one more time. Once you select the color group, that's the icon. I don't know, just in case it wasn't showing there. Uh, all you have to do is to click on the icon and it will automatically be added here inside your library. So let me know in the chat. I'm looking for your feedback. <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody has seen everything. I can't believe that we just have 30 minutes. Time goes so fast. Right. So we have our logo, we have our pillow image and we have our graphics and we have our color palette. It looks like we are ready to go to create um, at, uh, a beautiful mock-up. Thank you so much, Cody. I really appreciate that. Ashraful, thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Let's keep up that communication in chat and send me a heart for some support and love because I was really scared <laughs> that the screen was gone. But let's keep going. Before we jumped into Photoshop from Illustrator, so I'm going to show you that another magic uh, shortcut. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit more about Adobe Stock. So as I said, Adobe Stock is a wonderful library that will allow you to access professional stock templates in terms of images, videos, audio, mockups, templates, and much more. And don't forget, once you create a mockup that I'm showing you, you can also uh, sell it inside Adobe Stock. So not only you can access content, but you can sell your own images and your own content and even your mockup templates. Because once we create a mockup, I'm going to show you how to convert it into a template to use over and over again. And also place it there in the market because there is a very good market for mockups. So I have friends and their job is just making mock-up and selling it. And that's not a business there. Just saying, that's not a great business idea. But what I wanted to show you is that you can also have access to the free, free templates there. So if we click on free and click on pillow, so if you do not have any credit with uh, Adobe Stock, you can always access these beautiful uh, images which are free of charge. So let's go ahead and find one that we can use for our mock-up. I think I've saw one before. So we have this one, uh, which is quite cute. And maybe this give us some fun with Illustrator. Maybe I can show you also how to remove that fruit over there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on license and you will see that it will download in my machine. 
but also it will automatically save to my latest mockup, uh, sorry, my latest folder. Here it is. So that's automatically sync into our library and you can choose as many as you want. So go ahead and choose the one that you prefer. Perfect. So let's jump back in Illustrator. As you can see, we have um, our pillow there. Oh, uh, and I know why it hasn't synced to the right library. Let me go ahead and make sure that we do that correctly. So look what happens. Once I save it to my library, uh, I can go ahead and click on manage and from here change the library. So um, let me see, how did we call the previous library? It's not Creative Pro. Um, let's go ahead and check, but you got the gist. You can go ahead and manage your library directly from here. So make sure that you click on manage and then you need to uh, then select the light library. Here it is. Uh, our library was called, I believe, mockup. Yeah, here it is, mockup the Emporium. Fantastic. So you can also manage your library directly from stock. Um, I don't know what happened there. Maybe I just need to refresh. My internet connection is not doing great for my laptop. Hopefully for the stream it is. Uh, but here it is. And at least you know how to and where to do that. Now we have our mockup there. You have two options. You can either open Photoshop and from there create a brand new file in order to access your mockup. So in this case, I'm going to go to Photoshop, then to the home page and select new file. If you are looking to display this mockup on screen, do not forget to use the option for web. We can maybe just make this mockup for our Instagram post. In this case, just use the 1080 by 1080 resolution, which is the resolution for our Instagram post. And we're going to call that Insta mockup, Insta pillow mockup, and then click on create in order to create a brand new file. So that's one way. But what if we want to jump right and use the actual size of the image for our mockup. So all you have to do here, like we did in order to edit our Illustrator graphic. Oh, a lot of hearts in the chat. Love you guys. <laughs> Love that support. Keep the hearts coming. They're really <laughs> Annika, Cody, Andreas, Ashraful, Derek. Thank you so much. Barbara, Monica. Thank you for all the love in the chat. Uh, I really hope that you find these streams useful. Let me know if you're enjoying this how to. And again, if you have any special request, this is the time because I'm watching the chat live so I can implement a new topic as well, ready for, for you and to show you how to create your favorite project using um, any app on Adobe Creative Cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the image. And besides all the wonderful uh, other options, which is, you know, even find similar. So we automatically browse the Adobe um, stock library and find similar images. What I'm interested into is to select edit and look what happens here. Uh, by selecting edits, Photoshop will open up and will open up inside our um, mockup. So we already have our pillow ready to be created. And I'm so sorry for that. I can see that my um, link might be a cable. I promise I will change cable for tomorrow. I'm glad that I caught a freezing. I'm going to keep my eyes on it. I'm actually going to move it around just to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Here it is. I got my notes over here, maybe disturbing the, the wire. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and let's start by clicking on the lock icon in order to unlock our layer. If you're not familiar to Photoshop, here we have a toolbar. Here we have our layers panel and the libraries panel. As per every app, if you're looking to a specific panel or if you see me using a panel, uh, that is not available on your workspace, make sure to head under window and from there you will be able to access right away any panel you like. Then uh, in order to get started, I'm going to go ahead and select any shape that is as close as possible to the shape that we're going to be uh, working with. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the rectangle tool. You can also click and drag in order to then create a rectangle. Once we click and drag, you will see that the rectangle will um, display. Oops. You will see that the rectangle uh, will display and will display with the color in the foreground. So in this case, the color is black. To change the color of your rectangle, you can head under appearance and from here select any colors you want for your fill. In this case, I'm just going to make it white just as a starting point. And that's just our beginning of creating the placeholder for our 
template and for our mask. And I'm actually going to go ahead and jump on the other side of the screen because uh, the layers right behind me, I'm going to start to uh, getting filled with images and very useful stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and move over there. Boop, here we are. Um, and as you can see, we have our layer here with our pillow. So double click to name your layer and make sure to always do that. So that's our pillow image. Uh, and then here we have our mock-up container. Here it is. Uh, so before we move forward, I'm going to go ahead and press Command-T or Control-T in order to uh, change the shape and simply transform our rectangle. I just want to make sure that I go over uh, our pillow completely. We want to make sure that we go over the entire pillow. And again, try to imagine this as um, maybe like a piece of cloth that we're going to wrap around our pillow. So we want to make sure that it's a little bit more and a little bit over our uh, our space. Then from there, once we create our rectangle, the very first thing that we want to do before we move forward is to transform our rectangle into a smart object. If you haven't heard about smart object before while working in Photoshop, start to use them. They are a lifesaver. Uh, smart objects allow you to, they work like a container. So we're going to see that's where we're going to place our images uh, and they will allow it to place one or more images effect inside uh, a specific layer and also to work non-destructively. In fact, every sort of adjustment or edit that you're going to make uh, and you're going to apply to your smart object, it will be um, editable. So you don't destroy your images and your creations. How do you transform a layer in, in, in a smart object? Real simple, just right click on it and you will see all you have to do is to click on convert to smart object to make it happen. Here it is. Uh, then all you have to do here is to start by dragging your opacity a little bit down. So on top of the layers panel, you will see that we have an opacity drop down menu with a slider. And this will allow us to, by dragging it down, it will allow us to change the level of opacity. Now, the cool thing is that if you select your layer and then press a number, so one, two, three, four, five, and so on, it will change automatically the level of opacity. And if you click on zero, it will go back to uh, 100%. That's a nice little trick. I'm gonna leave it to 60% for now. And what I'm gonna do now uh, is to answer Ashraful question, I believe. <laughs> so Ashraful, thank you for your question. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see how I can organize my library, making separate folder based on category. My library is a bit messy. Okay, so library do that for you right away. So in order to organize your content over here is to simply, you can simply select here where it says sort options. You can group by type and you will see that automatically is going to bring color, graphics, and images, or you can also uh, sort by uh, custom group. In this case, you'll be able to create custom groups and uh, folders in order to uh, have different group selection. Also, you can click on create group in order to customize your group. And that's the way in which, for example, I'm going to use here image for mockup. And here it is that uh, allow you to organize your library as you work. Very, very good question. Uh, let me see if there is any other question. I think the best way to do it is on the web, on Creative Cloud app as well. No, no, we don't need to leave. The beauty of working with Creative Cloud libraries is that you do not lose your focus. You stay in the app and do everything from there. And let me actually show you something really quick. I'm gonna go ahead here and take a screenshot of our little image here, if my computer allows me to do so. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot, literally, from the different logos, right? So let's say that someone, your client, your art director provides you with a photo. And then it tells you, hey, make sure that your mock-up or whatever you're creating for me has the same colors available here uh, for us. Um, here it is, available for us. So all we have to do is to uh, simply place our screenshot and I'm going to go ahead and grab it from my desktop. Here it is inside my Photoshop file. That's the screenshot that I created just right now. And then from the libraries, check this amazing feature out. You can go ahead and click on the plus icon where it says uh, uh, add elements and then select create from image. By doing so, you will be able to open 
create from image. This is a capture service also available inside your creative cloud libraries. And by clicking on color themes, look at that. It already picks up the colors from your screenshot and that can be any image. I just use a screenshot because I wanted to make sure that I have the color theme for the brand, but you can literally use any photo you like and you can pick up the color theme. So let's say that you're working for a clothing uh, company and they just show you the, you know, maybe the photo of their advertising, which has their clothing, or maybe they show you a particular color that you want to match. Thanks to this uh, option here under the library, you will be able to save this color palette inside your Creative Cloud library. So here we have a different options. Uh, of course, here we just have the brand, so we don't have too many colors to go, but I thought that that was quite useful to show. And then again, here we can create another group uh, and color colors. And then in here we can add all the color palettes. And again, look how easy it is. You can simply drag and drop inside the group so you can reorganize it. And I really hope that Astrafool that was helpful for you. Fantastic. So let's go on with our mock-up. So what we've done so far is created a shape that is similar to our um, whatever it is that we want to mock up in this case is a pillow so we start for with a, with a rectangle then we create a smart object do not forget this step that's super important create a smart object by right clicking on it and what we're going to do here is drag the opacity down so we can see the original image and we can create a nice professional mock-up and then it's time to transform it and really start to tailor our image so it looks like our mock-up so i'm going to go ahead and press command t to transform and uh, once we've done so, I'm going to go ahead and use this little icon over here that would allow you to access the wrap modes. Once we select the wrap modes, you will see that we can create a mesh that will allow you to change the image and change the shape more flexibly and have more with more flexibility and more control. You can use any of the um, selected already pre-made presets for the wrap. Uh, the closest one for the pillow is the one called squeeze because it just gives us a little squeeze. And then you can go back into your custom here by adding other points in order to perhaps add these other vertical points and making sure that we click and drag any of these points over here and we just drag it inside our, uh, our little mock-up here. Again, you can use the handle. That's pretty much like... Um, like a vector when we create a vector in Illustrator and you have our anchor points and our handles that allow us to move our mock-up around. Now, I would strongly recommend you to take more time here and make sure that you do um, take your time in order to create a mock-up that is as much as possible uh, adherent to your design. So we just we wanna always make sure that we go a little bit above um, our a little design there and our background uh, just like so uh, and I actually thought about something because I'm playing a little bit easy with a white uh, with a white design I want to show you how uh, you can actually uh, work if your if your pillow is of, a, of another color because I think you know white is a great starting point and I would strongly recommend you to use white when you're creating your mock-up so you can implement any color you wish but I also want to show you how you can um, work around in order to change color to your graphics. So let me just finish off here real quick. And again, please zoom in and add as many anchor points as you want and just go ahead and really refine your mask. Take your time. It is worth it to zoom in and really refine it. I have so many things to show you and about 20 minutes left. So uh, I'm just going to be a little bit raw and fast. Luis, nice to see you. Welcome in. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you. Thank you for joining us. Ashraful, yes, looks like the mesh tool. Fantastic. So once you're done, simply press on return. And don't worry, this is always editable. You can always go back and change the mesh. Just press Command T to access transform. And then again, use um, the warp tool in order to, to create it. But I'm just going to pause here one second because I want to show you um, how to perhaps change color to the pillow. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on the main pillow image, right click and transform this into a smart object in order to work non-destructively. This is so important. So we do not uh, change uh, our original data and our original um, image in order to uh, do anything we want with it. 
Now we did select it. I'm going to go ahead and click on our object selection tool. We want to make sure that our object find a brand new addition to our object selection tool uh, for uh, during Adobe Max 2021 for Photoshop 2022. Uh, look at this beauty. Now, once you cover it, uh, and I have it in white, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that from our option, I can select another color, which is actually, we can see something. I'm going to use this sea foam. Um, you can see that by hovering on the object, not only um, the Magic Sensei, which is Adobe Creative, uh, sorry, Adobe uh, Artificial Intelligence, scans the image and finds the relevant objects there for you, but also will allow you to select it. And if you have more than one object, maybe we can play with the other image with multiple pillow. It will allow you to isolate different objects as well. And all you have to do is to click on it to select it. That easy. Once you do that, all you're left to do is to, to then click on a solid color to add a solid color to it. Let's make it red, for example. And then from here, head to the blend modes, which are located on the top of the layers panel. And then we can change by selecting color. And by doing so, we'll be able to match the color. Or you can also use multiply. Maybe in this case, multiply works a little bit better. Uh, multiply will allow you to retain all the shadows. So let's say that your pillow is in this case red, you can change the color and you can also uh, perhaps once you have your selection, maybe uh, just play with you and saturation. So again, all I'm going to do here is to apply the same um, mask simply by clicking and selecting the mask of the you and saturation over there. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead, click on it and you can invert it as well. So let me show you how to create an inverted mask is actually by holding the option key and clicking on the mask and then selecting invert, just like so. And then from a UN saturation, if you want to, all you have to do is to bring the saturation to zero and the lightness and here it is. So if you have, for example, a red pillow, you can switch it back to white. So I just wanted to show you how to change color because I'm playing safe with a white you know, that usually make it much, much easier, but you can bring it to white. So hopefully that's um, helpful. And again, don't worry, we have tomorrow as well. I'm planning to show you, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a preview, how to go into something as complex as these two elements. So we're going to have a um, prospective crop tomorrow and also a wrap around something like a jar. I'm starting soft with the pillow over here just because it's a very easy to understand shape so you can get the technique and tomorrow we'll dive in into something a little bit more complex. So we learned about creative, creative cloud libraries, Adobe stock, how to sync, how to organize, how to pick color from an image and how to change color of, of an object, how to edit elements in Photoshop. If you're tuning in here together, we're about to jump into how to create the mockup. And uh, you can always go back and watch the replay if you just tune in. There is uh, so much more coming up. So let's take advantage of this 15 minutes together. Uh, in order to start, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a little folder for this color change. So we can hide it because I really like to keep our layer organized. I know it may seem a little bit um, maybe obsession with layers organization, but you will be thankful for your future self. And also, if you're looking to sell your mockups, you're, you're going to become super popular. That's how I personally choose and I buy mockups here and there when I don't have time to create them. I always choose people that they have that have um, layer organized. So make sure that you do your, your mockups right, even if you want to sell it on, on the uh, Adobe stock as well. So let's go ahead. Now that we've created our shape, uh, that it looks like our, uh, our pillow, all we're left to do is to bring our image in. So how do we do that? All we have to do here now is to simply go ahead and double click inside our smart object. And look what happened. The smart object goes back into its general form. So it looks like is a square, the square that we created at the beginning. All I'm left to do here is to head back to my libraries and uh, we're going to start simply real quick by dragging um, just the logo. I'm just going to go ahead with the logo and show you how I mean, let's do it with something a little bit more complex. I'm going to go ahead and show you this image over here. 
um, you can drag any corner of the bounding box in order to resize it and make sure to hold the alt key to resize it from the center so it stays in the center and you resize it from there and look what happens there by pressing command s and saving our wonderful container and then control v or command v to close it we have it there inside our mock-up all we're left to do is to click and drag in order to bring it back and if it looked a little bit distorted that's when we can go back and use the power of our mesh in order to bring it back so again here we can use one of the split mesh to just give it a little bit of of a different look oops command z if you have any issue here my computer is going a little slow uh, but again we can go back into our warp click on the warp so command t to enter the transform and then uh, command uh, sorry command t to the transform and then click on the warp uh, we can go back into our uh, squeeze and that will allow us to uh, enter our little grid and we can here use our little handles in order to move it accordingly if it's too much squish perhaps and you can also by the way click and drag anywhere inside the pillow in order to make sure that you can move it so not only you have the corner to move over there but you can also drag anywhere inside to make sure that you resize it correctly so you can go ahead and do so also another very important feature like we've seen before was to use the multiply in order to start to have that look for our image and we're just going to go back here once we have multiply you see that it start to get the shape of the pillow what we're going to do here is go back into our wonderful object selection tool make sure that we create a selection of our pillow and we're going to apply the mask to our mock-up just like so fantastic so let's move forward and let's go back into our illustrator so what i want to show you here is how to actually create a specific graphic for it we have um, about 10 minutes as i said go and use that mesh and really refine it as much as you want um, with the different little squish there uh, what I want to show you here, hopefully my computer is going to allow us to do so in these last 10 minutes, is to select this image. And what I'm going to do is to create a square, just like so, um, by using the shift all command or the uh, just the shift all command in order to open our artboard tool. And here we're going to create a square artboard. And click on return if you want to make sure that you have a specific size so in this case you can create a thousand uh, by a thousand pixels here we go and click on create in order to create the artboard that you know for sure is square um, what i've done here is just simply copy and paste this design that i've created before but how am i gonna isolate this design so it just fits into a square because we want to bring it back inside our square for our pillow well, what you have to do here is simply create a rectangle. So I'm going to press the M in order to access the rectangle tool. Remember, we are back into Illustrator and click and drag in order to create um, a shape that will overlap our main shape. If you want to, you can always head to your properties panel and make sure that we have for sure a thousand by a thousand into our uh, in both our um, height and width in order to create a square and then we align it respectively to the artboard vertically and horizontally just like so uh, once we've created our rectangle it doesn't really matter the shape uh, sorry the color because we're going to use that as a mask i'm going to click and drag over it and then use the shortcut command 7 in order to create a group so we already have an overview of how we have our pillow does that look familiar that look familiar are we nearly there <laughs> we're nearly there so uh if you want to learn how to create this specific uh, crop and how to frame your artwork in illustrator i want to show you and i'm super proud to show you this little feature here if you actually jump inside your little search icon there and um you head here under your Dis discover panel which is again a brand new introduction after adobe max uh in october all here you have so many wonderful hands-on tutorial created by outstanding members of the community of also 
and also Adobe employees. And that's yours truly with hide part of an artwork uh, with a mask, which is the, what we just done. If you click on the tutorial, you will be able to jump right in. You can see that's beautiful tutorial by Clady there. I'm so, so excited. It's just launched. Please go ahead and have a trial with this wonderful tutorial. They're super helpful. Make sure to go ahead and click on start tutorial and you will be uh, helped step by step to do exactly what we've done before. You have this very useful video that show you how to create these selections so you can learn quickly and easily how to perform uh, many different uh, many different actions inside Illustrator and Photoshop. I can't believe it. I have my name inside the app somewhere. I'm super, super excited. I had to share it with you. Right. So now that we have our mask created, which frame do is to simply click and drag it inside our library and as you already know it will be automatically added inside our library everywhere so here it is ready for us to uh, add inside our mask so again double click on our mask and look what i'm doing here i'm going to go ahead and access window and select layer comps now, I know I'm going a little bit too fast, but I just want to give you a sense of all these beautiful things that we can do. Don't forget that we are here tomorrow as well. So um, if you have any specific part, Meg is saying, how do we access the replay? You can access the replay either on YouTube or on Behance, simply by scrolling down here in the schedule. Uh, you will have what's new and you also have, I believe this is going to be found under graphic design. You can watch it from scratch. But also we have tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to use this process for even more complex designs. So we're going to go over the workflow together again in order to um, learn it again and to practice it again together until you got every step right. Um, then what I'm going to do here, once I select the layer comp, I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus icon to create the first layer comp. So a layer comp is a composition which saves different part of our layers. In this case, I want to get our visibility and I'm going to call this one logo and I'm going to click on OK. And I'm so sorry, this screen is getting really annoyed. I don't know what happened. I'll make sure that I get another cable tomorrow so we don't get any flickering effect. Thank you for your patience there. And uh, what we can do here, uh, you can select, make sure to select the different layer. So if I want a different layer where I just have, for example, my logo, I can click on the eye icon in order to change the visibility of my layer and perhaps just bring the Emporium logo and you can go ahead and center it thanks to the smart guys, which are these beautiful, I always feel like I say smart guys, but they're smart guides that will allow you to know when you're centering horizontally and vertically real quick and real fast. So you can easily uh, make sure that you align your design to whatever is the artboard. Uh, if not, you can always click on the move tool and from here you will be able to align uh, compared to the layer. What I usually do is select Command A. So I select all the pixels around and then I select my layer and then again, align it vertically and horizontally. That's another quick trick. So here we have um, another layer comp. So again, click on the plus icon and I'm going to call this one logo blue and click on OK. And then we're going to create a new one with our design. So here we are with our lovely design over there. Press on return. Uh, and then create a new layer comp and I'm going to call this one illustration, just illo and click on OK. You can name it whatever, whatever way you want. That's completely up to you. Just make sure that you turn the right visibility on and off. Uh, also here, when you see this checkerboard pattern, it means that I have a white background, sorry, transparent background. So remember, we will be able also to change the color uh, by changing the color of the pillow or you can create here a solid background simply by clicking on the adjustment layers. I'm being a bit messy, not naming my layers, but we've got a few minutes left here. And you can always create any color background that you want and just place it under your illustration, just like so. I'm going to hide this one for now. And I'm going to press Command Save to make sure that all the changes that we made in our smart object, can you see how cool smart objects are? Mind blowing, are saved. And then we can go back inside our pillow and you will see that our illustration is there. 
Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and again, make sure that I change the warp. It looks like uh, I went a little bit further with my with my warp there. So you can always, always change this again, press on command T and then warp in order to change it uh, over there. I'm going to go ahead and use a three by three grid. Uh, and what happens there, it just creates a different warp. It looks like it's overriding my previous changes, but make sure to press. Can you see that the image moved to the right? All we have to do is to simply press on Command T and we want to make sure that we bring it back. And the reason why this is image is hiding is because we used our mockup. So everything is hiding under this mockup over here. Can you see? Because we have created a mask based on our pillow. And again, you can go back and simply redo uh, the different squeeze uh, by taking your time. Again, Command T to transform, bring the layer, whatever you want, and then give it a little bit of a squeeze to make sure that it gets a real feel of the pillow over there, just like so. Perfect, but it's almost time to go. I really wanna show you why. Why, do, why did we create that layer comp? Well, we created a layer comp because by creating a layer comp, we will be able to access the different document here. And let me go ahead and see why that didn't update. I just wanna make sure that we uh, save our mockup there. So we have all these different illustration for our container. Let me go ahead and check what happened here. Once we select our layer comp, we should be able to change it from our properties panel. Fantastic. Yes, here it is. So look what happens here. We have the mockup as it is right now. Uh, so there is no layer comp applied, but once we had, so we use the layer comp panel to create the layer comp, then to display it inside our mockup, all we have to do is to head here under properties panel, make sure to select the layer with your smart object and under here where it says mockup container, we can go ahead and click on this drop down menu and look at that in just one click it will automatically bring all the different images and all the different logos uh, just like so. Now it looks like we had to, you know, perhaps play a little bit with the image. That's great. It tells, you know, look, the logo there is looking a little bit too big. Fantastic. That's a great way of seeing that real quick, double click on it to jump inside your logo, then bring your visibility back up, click on transform and simply by holding alt and clicking and dragging one of the corner of the bounding box, we can make it smaller. It looks like I went over time, uh, but uh, I'm so sorry. And I just wanted to say bye to everybody. We're going to be back together um, and we're going to be back together here at Adobe Live tomorrow with another how to and we're going to take it from where we left it today i look forward to see you there <laughs> bye bye everybody and sorry for this little bit of extra time thank you everyone bye